Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Myung Jin and San. Tonight I want to talk about the four R's. And no, that's not reading, writing, arithmetic, and rhythm, but reflection, reaction, response, and reflex. Reaction often gets a uh, gets some bad press, and that's not without merit because a lot of times when people react, it's kind of that shoot from the hip, off the cuff, you know, no filter involved, kind of, you know, stimulus comes in, reaction goes out, and, you know, who knows how much uh, harm it might do. And response is generally thought of as a more um deeply considered uh action um sometimes we think of response as superior to reaction when we do these things when we respond or react to a cause or condition We often find ourselves in a place where it's a side product of our practice or it's not. I mean, when we're reflecting, we can look at ourselves for starters, right? Because after all, Zen is a practice of reflection, right? It's a direct experience of reality. If it doesn't start out that way, it becomes the ability to react or respond or answer a cause or condition intuitively. A lot of the reflection we do initially is on ourselves. We take a look at how our day went by. Uh, we can look at how we're living at this particular period of time in our lives. We even have some little goalposts that we can use, like the five precepts, for example, you know? Did I kill anyone today? Well, not today. Did I lie? Uh, maybe a little. Did I have any illicit sexual experiences? Well, Jimmy Carter said he lusted in his heart, so I'm not any worse than Jimmy Carter, I suppose. Did I steal anything? Well, nah. Definitely didn't steal anything today. And did I imbibe? Did I take any recreational or illicit drugs or liquor or anything else that might lead to that feeling of not quite here? Personally, no, but there are a lot of people who think a glass of wine with dinner is uh, not a violation of the fifth precept and, you know, fair play to them. So we do this reflection on ourselves for starters. And then as time goes on, we can start reflecting on um, how we fit in and how what we do fits in uh, in our closest circle, 
you know, the people we come in contact with directly every day. You know, we see the interconnectedness. Maybe we see how uh, an action that we took had an effect on one of the other people. Okay. And then we can go a little, you know, broader than that. And then broader than that, we can see when we reflect how our um, actions have an impact on the entire universe. When we calm our minds through meditation, our minds become clear. They aren't instantly clear, but they become clear. When our mind becomes clear, the world becomes clear. Our direction becomes clear. When our direction is clear, correct action is clear. How may I help you? Zen Master Sun San would also uh, often talk about situation, relationship, and function as far as how our interactions with the world go intuitively knowing how to act. When we've done our time on the cushion or walking or chanting or bowing or however we meditate, that reflection that we do becomes part of us, right? It becomes intrinsic. It is not something we even have to think about. Would I kill someone? No, well, no, you know, I'm just, that's my reflexive reaction to the idea of killing someone. It's no. that same sort of intuitive, reflexive response to situations can come by way of our time reflecting. When given a stimulus, let's say, to make it sound scientific, there's going to be some sort of action, reaction, response to that stimulus, right? If someone hits your knee with a mallet in the doctor's office, your leg is gonna kick, right? It just happens. That's the reflex. And in the same way, when we have done all this reflection, our uh, actions in general with other people can become that same sort of, uh, well, <laughs> I hate to use the term knee jerk because that has sort of bad press these days also, but it can become our knee-jerk reaction. Think about it. You're paying attention to your surroundings. You're experiencing reality directly at this moment. And you hear a, a baby cry. Now you might respond with, well, the situation is the baby is crying. The relationship is it's not my baby. So my function might be find mom and tell her her baby is crying. Or if I were to pick up and comfort the baby itself, might not be quite correct function. So we have to pay attention to where we are. There isn't any sort of blanket correct action, right? 
So if you're a parent and your baby's crying and it's crying for two days straight, well, you might be able to think about it and say, well, you know, babies cry. You just born two days ago. That's what babies do. And that's not an unreasonable thought. However, you know, after two days, maybe you might think about going to the ER. That's clear mind manifesting. Not picking up somebody else's baby, but finding a parent. Your own baby is crying, comfort, and then maybe the next right action is to go to the ER. If you're on a basketball court and the defense is taking away your three-point shots, they are just defending you outside and you're getting nothing. Your correct action would probably be to drive the paint and go for some two-pointers if all the defenders are spread around the perimeter. It's in times like that that there's really no time to think about it, right? The time that's usually involved in response has already been done by the amount of time we've done meditating. Now, let's say you come upon someone on a bridge and they're about to jump off. Normally, in the worldling kind of sense, if you take the time to ponder and consider and think and so on and so forth, so you come up with a response, splash. If through the reflection, your reflex action becomes, how may I help this guy? Is it grab his legs and keep him from falling off? Is it talking them down off the proverbial edge? What is it? What's correct action? And that's determined by the amount of reflection we've done, how we react, how we respond. It becomes reflexive. 